All right, guys. So the blame game has officially begun. Um, in the wake of Kamala's big loss, a lot of conversations are happening on the Democratic side, on the liberal side, on the leftist side. So let me show you this here. Uh, this is from a senior White House correspondent uh, and an anchor on Fox News. The blame game has begun inside Harris World. Harris Wall surrogate, a member of the DNC National Finance Committee and Pennsylvania commissioner tells me, Tim Walls was a bad choice of running mate. Shapiro would have carried the blue wall states. All right, just right off the bat here, this is fucking delusional, and this is obviously incorrect. Trump won by a very, very comfortable margin. Very comfortable. The idea that a different VP pick would have changed that outcome is nonsense. And this is just this woman trying to confirm her priors. She probably didn't like Tim Walls to begin with and liked Josh Shapiro and wanted Josh Shapiro to be the pick. So now in retrospect, she's saying, oh, if it was Josh Shapiro, we, we would have won. Guys, it's, Trump has over 300 electoral college votes. He may end up winning the popular vote, right? So this was not like, hey, with this one little tweak, this one weird trick, oh, it all could have been different. No, no. Um, they say Harris's positions were not clearly staked out. She knows it was a mistake to say on The View that she couldn't think of a single thing that she would do differently from the Biden administration that was opener for her to show Americans that she's going to get tough on the border, that she's going to take drastic measures to bring down inflation. That was her chance. And she knew that she maybe should have were two things differently when in the next 40 minutes. What does that mean? And she said, I would appoint a Republican to the cabinet. So she walked that back a little bit. Okay. On the point that um, that was her worst moment, I agree. The idea that you couldn't separate yourself from Biden. And ultimately, that's what this election was about. It was an anti-incumbency vote. And by you not separating yourself from Biden, you are effectively saying, I am a continuation of Biden. And people did not want that. I agree that that was probably her worst moment. But again, I want to be clear. Even if she didn't do that, would she have won? These are not small margins that we're talking about here, right? The focus on fascism was not working. On that one, it's like, okay, well, what do you want people to do? Not state the obvious? Not say, hey, this guy tried to overthrow the last election. He tried to do a coup. He did fake elector slates. He wanted to invoke, invoke the Insurrection Act. You know, he wants to surround himself with loyalists and give himself all the power. If you want to say, hey, don't use the word fascism, use the word authoritarian, okay, we can have a conversation about that, but don't pretend like... Oh, if you just dropped that part of the campaign, everything would work out. Again, that is incredibly delusional. Uh, they say too many cooks in the kitchen led to muddled campaign messaging, poor staffing decisions in key battleground states. Again, this is just, this is classic as to what happens when a campaign loses. Everybody's pointing fingers at everybody else trying to deflect blame from themselves. And, um, you know, it ends up as a total mess. They say Harris team was expecting a protracted legal fight, even extended hotel rooms for big donors through Thursday. Now they're going home. In other words, um, they thought it would be a close election and Trump would try to declare victory, but ultimately it wasn't even a close election. So now everybody's sort of tapping out. Look, guys, here's my fear. Here's my fear. I'm worried that the Democrats will learn all of the wrong lessons from this, right? I'm worried that the Democrats will look at Trump's win and will go, we just have to be more like Trump. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Like, I think they'll look at it and say, we need to be more authoritarian. We need to be more fascist. You already hear her saying we should have been even tougher on the border. I guarantee you that was not the issue. Democrats have a super conservative record on the border, and they're the ones who had the bipartisan bill that would have cracked down on the border even more. It has nothing to do with that, right? But I fear it's going to be like, okay... Let's get even tougher on the border. Let's just agree with Republicans completely on the border. Let's start saying we want mass deportations also. Um, let's start throwing trans people under the bus or whatever. I fear that that's the lesson they're going to learn, which is just... It would be a worst-case scenario, right? That would be a worst-case scenario. Because I we need them to stand for something. I got to be honest. I think the, the reason Trump won, it really was more of all the intangible shit. I told you guys this in the other segment, but bottom line, this was an anti-incumbency vote, period. They said, we're mad about inflation, we're mad about the economy, we blame Joe Biden and the Democrats, therefore we're going to vote against the Democrats. That's all this was. Uh, but, you know, the intangible stuff that helped Trump is 
He's charismatic. He's controversial. And he's a celebrity. And he feels like revolutionary and authentic. And people in times of dire need for change, people will turn to the ones who are seemingly more willing to bring about change, right? The less establishment-y candidate. And that's why they cut in that direction. So what the Democrats need to do is copy this part of Trumpism. Trumpism super serves, serves his own base. So Democrats need to super serve their own base. But also like, yeah, a lot of this just comes down to basic visceral shit of like, have somebody who's more charismatic, have somebody who's a celebrity, have somebody who's controversial, build up your own, uh, you know, information mechanisms. The right has, has a lock on Twitter and they have a lock on the podcast sphere. And like, you need to counter that to try to capture the culture more thoroughly. And like, it's all shit like that, which led to this loss. Because the fact of the matter is Kamala ran a better campaign than Hillary 2016. Trump ran a worse campaign than Trump 2016. And Trump still ended up winning. Which tells me it's literally just a, we're kind of desperate, fuck the people who are in there, we're going to go in the other direction. So for you to just marry up with this iteration of insane far-right Republicans, that would absolutely spell doom for the Democrats for a long time, right? And that's what I'm afraid of, man. I'm afraid of, uh, and the other thing is, what lesson did Republicans take away from this? The lesson they took away from it is never, ever, 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 ever cross Trump. Everybody who's ever crossed Trump in the Republican Party has lost their career. And now the ones who stuck their neck out there to say, we don't want Trump, they're even more irrelevant than they've ever been, right? Because obviously the Republican Party is not going to reform. They're going to double down and triple down on Trumpism because Trumpism just won. So now you have an incredibly sycophantic Republican Party that will go wherever Trump wants them to go. All of the politicians will coddle his nutsack. Hear me now, quote me later. And it sounds like the conversations happening behind the doors for Democrats is we need to move more in their direction also. So in other words, you want extreme authoritarianism with no checks and balances, no voice of opposition. This would be an utter cataclysmic apocalyptic disaster. And you already see the conversations. You already see some people, you know, talking on MSNBC, the Morning Joe types were going after cancel culture and wokeness. Like, bro... Kamala didn't say a fucking goddamn word about cancel culture or wokeness or race or identity politics. She bent over backwards to not do that. She was running on patriotism and USA and freedom. Uh, and every time somebody tried to prod her on race or gender, she would say, I'm trying to represent every American. The idea that that's the problem here, that is not the problem here. But, you know, there was a famous tweet back in the day when Trump won. It said, Democrats are going to look in the mirror and go, we need to be more racist. Now, they're probably going to look in the mirror and say, we need to be more fascist right? And that's what I'm afraid of. Guys, it's almost a secondary point as to whether or not you win or not. The primary point is, for the love of fucking God, stand for something, right? For the love of God, stand for something. And uh, they're failing on that front, aren't they? They're failing on that front. Look, any criticism you levy at Kamala, she, she has a rebuttal to it, right? She, she would have a rebuttal to it. Oh, you should have reached out to Republicans. Well, they fucking did. They did in like seven different ways. Oh, you should have reached out more uh, to the base. Well, they kind of did. $6,000 child tax credit, kind of a big deal. Have a Medicare cover home care, kind of a big deal. Go after medical debt, kind of a big deal. Pick Tim Walls, kind of a big deal, right? So, like, they didn't do everything horribly. I mean, some things were bad, but a lot of things were good, and they didn't win. So that means it was an anti-incumbency election. She was tarred with the number that only 25% of the country think we're going in the right direction. That's why they went for Trump. The way to defeat Trump moving forward is to provide an alternative to Trump when inevitably his project hits the fan. The shit will hit the fan with Trumpism. Hear me now, quote me later, especially now because there are zero guardrails. He's going to try to do the unitary executive theory. He's going to take a hatchet to all the regulatory government agencies, the Supreme Court is going, going gonzo for now, from now until 70 years from now. It'll be a 7-2 Republican Supreme Court. It'll be absolutely disastrous. The amount of damage that can be done vis-a-vis -vis the environment, vis-a-vis -vis big business and pollution, vis-a-vis -vis everybody's rights, uh, regulation of business to prevent waste, fraud, and abuse, the, the damage that's going to be done is astronomical. The unitary executive theory where Trump gets to call all the shots. You need to be there to call it out, block it, and provide a counter alternative. Respond to the far-right extremism with a clear vision of 
leftism, right? And it sounds now like what they're guessing is, what they're saying is we're going to go in the opposite direction. You know, oh, blame Tim Walz. He was the most popular guy on either of the tickets. That was the fact before uh, today, and that's the fact after today. He was, he was the most popular guy. But they're, gonna, they're blaming him, right? It, it, what, what am I going to do with these people? What am I going to do with these people? The media is going to take the wrong lesson. The Democrats are going to take the wrong lesson. The Republicans are going to take the wrong lesson. Uh, it is... It's a scary moment for that reason, right? And they're just going to read the tea leaves and take away that everything horrific and horrible Trump did was actually based in good in the eyes of the population. And I, I simply don't buy that. As I said, I view this more as an anti-incumbency vote and then mix on top of that celebrity of Trump, controversy of Trump, charisma of Trump. That's why he ended up winning. It's really not any deeper than that. And... Um, <laughs> They're already pointing fingers. The blame game has already begun. And um, unfortunately, I think it's going to be a dark four years. And I, all I can say is, I hope with how extreme Trump is about to be, Democrats get their shit together and know how to fight. But I worry that they'll like 30% to 50% now go along with his extremism because they feel like, well, that's how we become a more ele electorally viable is being just like Trump. Oh boy. Oh boy. That would be ugly. Hey y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.